Greetings and indeed a self-reflective salutations. Welcome to Tech 3D uh, for another episode of the, the the thing I forgot even had a name yesterday when I did a, a, did a, an episode of this cross examination. So this is an end of year kind of special because since I, I started doing this this se- this series, quite a lot of people have said, "Well, why don't you why don't you just react to your own tutorials?" And I thought, "Okay, let's do that." I've, I've got quite a lot of them though, so I thought we're better to start with than with my very first ever tutorial. So let's take a look, right? This, and this video is going to be quite long because I'm going to be talking a lot about why I was doing the things I was doing, why I am like I am. And I don't know, just reflect on how times have changed, how times were back then. And just, I, I, I don't know, right? So it's going to be a bit longer than normal. It's not the usual critique, although I will be critiquing what I'm doing because I know there's quite a fair bit uh, that I could have done differently, but... Uh, times were very different. Back then, when I joined on the 12th of January 2014, my very first video was this one here. Hide image decal background. And this was uploaded on, I would imagine, the same day. Yeah, 12th of January 2014. So this is the very first one that I did. So let's let's start with um with with my introduction so back then my channel was called cloud card and that was because fusion 360 had only just released and there was a lot of hype around it and uh, i thought cloud could be the future of card so i called my channel cloud card to sort of look like i knew what was going on and i had some kind of insight which i really didn't and i was experimenting with sony vegas as well because uh, i didn't have any video editing experience whatsoever back then so it took me a long time uh, way more time than I care to admit to make this introduction. So I'd, I'd been an inventor certified professional, right? I passed that exam for sort of nine years straight, 100% pass score for the majority of time. And I just turned that into this nice fancy graphic. Look at that. That's nice. And the music. Oh, look at that lens flare. Wow, yes. That epic music from World of Warcraft, Mr. Pandaria, which was the active expansion back then. Uh, but 12 seconds worth of intro, not good. <laughs> yeah, that's way too long for an introduction. But, so this is this was my mindset back then. Back in 2013, 2014, right, tutorials were really bleak. They were, they were absolute drivel. So I wanted to make this like a show, and I wanted people to get value from the videos I was going to put up, but I wanted them to stay because of me. I, I didn't want people to just click on stuff take what they need and then just vanish. I wanted to make it entertaining because the majority of the tutorials out there were just, let's be honest, they're still f***ing arse. Just silence. It's just silence or pure music or people with really boring monotone, like monotone accents, right? Which were really difficult to listen to. So I wanted to make it a bit different. And I tried to come into this, like making it a show, hence the the the, the introduction, which is way too long. But the graphics, mate, smart, spot on. That lens flare. Integrating invention, consulting services for digital design and data management. I don't know what integrating invention means. <laughs> I don't, what, what, what is that? That just sounds like absolute sales patter. Uh, but the, the reason I started these videos, right, was I, I'd not long gone self-employed. Uh, and I'd recently come out of a CAD supplier gig, which I'd been in for a lot of years. And um, I was just making videos to hopefully get noticed by somebody who might think, oh, we can get... Oh, he does training, he does consulting services. His videos are good. Let's give him a call. Let's drop him an email. And that's what these videos were started for, you know. But at the same time, I wanted them to be a show. But this is just way too much. <laughs> it's but this is reflecting on how times have changed. Like why why have I got this here when the title of the video clearly says what it is? But it was supposed to be like the 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 tight the starting credits for a for a show. Do you know what I mean? And I'd make it the same. And I've got the little, you know, the lens sparkle going on in the text there. It was like, yeah, I could do these things on Sony Vegas as much as I had a watermark flying around. And I thought, this looks really impressive, Neil. Well done. <laughs> but it was just unnecessary. Hello. Whoa, look at that flapping. What was that? Hello. With the flappy. Hello. And thank you for coming along to my tips and tricks session. This tip. Oh. <laughs> tips and tricks session. There you go. If there was ever any more of a an indication as to my frame of mind back then, I was so used to doing seminars in front of people on stage, right, or classroom sessions, 
So hello, welcome along to my session. <laughs> Who do you think is watching this? That's your first video. Trick in particular. But to be fair, really good visuals though. Given this was 2014, pin sharp, right? The, the text is pin sharp. The resolution's good. This was a lot better than what else was going on nine years ago. So well done with that. Apart from the really annoying watermark, I hadn't I didn't buy Sony Vegas until like a year or so later. So I was just using the Thank trial. You. Is all. Either a trial or a cracked version. I can't remember. Probably. Let's just say a trial for, <laughs> for uh, well, legal issues. How to insert an image, uh, place it onto your model, and then make it look pretty awesome. What I mean particularly and specifically, specifically. by that is... Oh, when right. You... I used to say that all the time. It was, again, being used to people in a class, having people in a classroom, like maybe in a classroom of 10 people, it was always like seven or eight people who just didn't follow what you were saying. So I would always like just dial my verbiage into into like, right, I'm going to tee up the next thing I'm going to say. I'm going to tee it up so you really listen to what I'm going to say because I, I got really frustrated with people who, even though I'd said something as clearly and as simply as I possibly could, they would still not get it. So I would like either repeat myself over and over again so it drives the point home or I would, just, I would line up a point by saying something like that. Have an image in within, I mean, Invent is a mechanical design package. Most images that you place in Inventor on your models are going to be logos of some sort or warning labels. Yeah, people or, know this. You know, you, like, these days, this I would be hammering this guy if he was doing this today, right? Everyone knows what a decal is. Like, that's why they've searched for your video. All you, Neil, all you need to do is just open up the model, right? Start a sketch, drop it on a face, edit it, right? Click the use mask button. And that's it. That's what people want to see. But because I'd come from that classroom environment and the seminars and stuff, I needed people to feel like they were getting the money's worth and to sort of stretch things out enough so that they felt like they got value. And um, as you're doing that, you, you kind of drop another nuggets of information out for people. These days, though, it just doesn't fly. People just don't appreciate it. You know, that sort of thing. It's not going to be anything exciting. It's not going to be a, a nice, pretty picture of a cartoon or anything like that. So it tend to be logos is quite a, a common one. Now, company logos, by default, tend to have wow, look a at white that. background like this. In the time since this video has been made, Autodesk have gone, they've ditched this brand. Uh, they went to that that A with the swirly sort of line going through the middle with the blue and green uh, brand colors. And now they're, they're in the, the amputated leg. <laughs> brand. So we've gone through two brand changes since I did this. Yes. So there's the Autodesk logo, black text with a white background. Now, if you place that image and then stamp it onto your model, you're going to get the white background on there. And that looks messy. Stamp it onto your model. That's that, That's how I, I always describe the decal command. Stamp it onto your model. So it, what uh, we want to It conveys what it does. do is you remove the white background and just have the logo. How yes, to do no. that? Well, you, could, we you could put it into Photoshop. 1 minute 18. And sort of mess about with it in Photoshop and remove the white background somehow if you've got those somehow. skills which I don't which I do uh, now do it in uh, to be fair it, it's probably you probably I'm probably doing it the right way you can't expect anyone who's using Inventor to also have an Adobe Photoshop license or Creative Cloud license so uh, if I was making this video now I wouldn't go into a Photoshop workflow to, to remove the background I would still do this of course you can so the, the way you do this I'm going to stamp a logo onto the side uh, arm of this little robot here. So I'm going to edit that particular part and then I'm going to stamp a sketch on this panel here and then I'm going to select insert image and it's going to ask me for an image so I'm going to use my CloudCAD logo <laughs> and that logo, I ripped it, it off from Skype. Uh, I mean I designed the logo and I just, I like the cloud that I went around the Skype logo so I thought I'm going to use that as inspiration for this for this logo. It came I don't hate it. I, did, I hated it back then, but I don't hate it now, to be honest. Okay. All right, the next thing you would tend okay. to do is sort of dimension it up, I guess. You would put it in the right place, which I kind of have to because it's not it's not in the right place right now. So I have to rotate it a bit. I guess I can align it, use the perpend uh, perpendicular. Parallel constraint. Uh, parallel constraint. Yeah. Th this is the, the little nuggets of information that people, I, I can't even give percentages, but some people really appreciate it the the length of the videos because nuggets like this would come out for people and they would they would learn other things than what the purpose of the video was for then there was the ones who were just like i, I don't I, I don't care about any of this just 
skip, 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 skip to the bit where I tick the box and remove the background. That was ultimately what drove me, uh, or one of the reasons that drove me away from tutorials in the end. But uh, yeah, th th this like parallel constraint, lining the logo up, getting it in place is what I would have done in sessions and classrooms and stuff. And people appreciated that. Some did. To make those makes the video much up, longer. And I suppose I should put it in place using some dimensions. Like that. I'm not really too fussed about the exact sizes as long as it's on the panel. That's all I really care about. <laughs> there it is. That'll do. I suppose I can make it a bit bigger. Like that. Right. Snap. <laughs> it just snaps so to the bottom. That's it in. As <laughs> Never you can mind. see, Move on. it's got a bit of a, a discolored background to it. So when I use the decal, 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 whatever <laughs> you pronounce it. I still don't know how it's pronounced. Is it decal or decal? I, I, to this day, still don't know. Man. And then stamp this <laughs> image funny. onto that face. It's going to look like that. I've got the grayish, whitish background behind the logo. And it just looks bobbins. It looks if I was making this video today, I would probably just start the video at this point and assume that everyone who needs to remove the background already knows how to place an image. The, this, the, the first, like, two, nearly three minutes, which is not required. <laughs> but this is my first ever video, and I just, yeah, it's a different it's mindset back then. So... What I'm then going to do, and I could have done this in the first place, but edit the sketch. Yes, you could have done <laughs> Now, when you place an image into a sketch in your Inventor browser, the image will appear as a child dependent of the sketch. There's Sketch 11, which I've just created. There's the image underneath it. This is, the, what, this is my classroom mentality coming in, explaining the sketch structure to people in the classroom. Very, very different. What you then do is you right-click on the image, and you go to the image properties. And in here, there is a transparency use mask. Wow, that dollar box has and not changed one bit. Tick that, and then as if by magic, the background vanishes. <laughs> magic. Like we now have an absolutely pristine, perfect logo stamped onto our model with no background whatsoever. And it looks absolutely glorious. It Isn't does, it? Neil. Absolutely now, glorious. It's not, it's not really magic. Um, it no kidding. It <laughs> works to a certain degree. If you've, if you've got a poor quality image... It may struggle. Right, Neil, you, I could, I, I should have just stopped there. But giving people their money's worth in a, in a classroom, right, I now have to go into all the uh, all the different eventualities that you could end up with. What happens if? Wh what do you do if something else happens, right? <laughs> this is good. So you know those images where it's a very low resolution image and it's very blocky. So you get like a distorted blocky effect between the text and the background. If you get that... It doesn't work so well. I've done it with this image here. Um, and that one is actually pretty, pretty good. good as well. Um, the orthographic camera on Turn yeah. the uh, perspective off so I can zoom in a bit, a bit further on this. See if I can see any irregularities. So you can see where it starts to distort here. What, you, what your ideal... Like, I remember at the time, showing people this felt like just as important as showing people how to do the mask in the first place because it's just something that I saw a lot when I was doing these images and, and removing the background so I felt it's really important everyone needs to know this and why this happens and what they what can they do if if they want it better than this the aim is is to have an absolutely perfect white background pristine perfect white background with a pixel sharp uh, text heading into the white background so there's no overlap what you're seeing here is overlap between the white background and the black text pixelated uh, image quality and zoomed out you can't see it but on a lower quality image you like would that visibly see logo. that blocky robotics. effect between the text and the background so you want a, as good a quality image as you can get and that looks wow this music yeah the music it was a bit much. Um, I, that did take a lot of grief over the years for the background music um and I never, I never related to what people were saying. A lot of people were saying that it was overpowering. It, it's not overpowering. It's just distracting. Like I said, I wanted it to be a show. I wanted it to be ambient. And just in case people thought I was boring, at least there's a bit of like happy, big, bouncy kind of ambient music there to make it feel, think, uplift the video a bit. But knowing what I know now, background music can't have a melody like that. It just needs to be very subtle. Really awesome. That's now stamped on the model. It will appear on drawings, it'll appear in renders, that sort of thing. It's all good. It's all good. So hopefully wow. you found that useful. If you did, like the video, helps me a lot, gets the video shared around and made more popular, and I'll be able to make some. I was editing these videos on a, on a laptop, so I, and then I migrated to a desktop with a sound bar for a speaker, and I, I could not get why people were saying the background music was just, I could not hear it. Uh, it's not. It's still not overpowering, but it's just distracting. Uh, and... Listen to me doing the YouTube things. Sort of thing. It's all good.
talk. So hopefully you found that useful. If you did, like the video. It helps me a lot. Gets the video shared around. And How do you know this? And I'll it's the first one you've more. done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Holding you to ransom. Like the video and that. If you do that, I'll make some more. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Oh, no toodles either. When did I start doing toodles? I don't know. Uh, but over the years, right, you know, I did my first five or six tips and tricks. These are the ones that I pulled out of the bag when I was doing seminars. Then I started moving on to bigger videos, the loft command and whatever else, and, you know, 3D sketching. And that's when I started to get really hyperactive. I sounded like some kind of kid's TV entertainer. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, and it, it was it was getting a bit much, but um, some people appreciated it, some people didn't. But over the years, just things started to change. Did different types of content, and oh uh, yeah, it was it was a, a you know good good times, good times. The channel's not grown a lot. I mean, I think my first ever sort of <laughs> subscriber milestone was six years ago. I think I did a ten thousand subscriber giveaway with a three D mouse. I think I don't know where that is. Where oh, there it is. 3D mouse giveaway, 10,000 subs six years ago. So in six years, I've only gained, what, 67,000 subscribers? That's, a, that's abysmal. That's abysmal growth. But um, it's just the nature of the tutorial gig, right? I mean, uh, I did this. I did a search before just to sort of see if it was, like, how random could I make this? So I do a search for SolidWorks tutorials. Click the first one that you come across. This is why I stopped. This guy's got 318,000 subscribers and his videos are getting like 70 to 200 views. That is appalling. But he's uploading on an outrageous schedule like 13 hours ago, 10 hours ago. People can't follow that. The majority of people who look for tutorials, like I've said all of this a lot of times before, but the majority of these people would have come across this channel because of one video and they went, this looks like it could be useful later on. I'll subscribe, so I've got it bookmarked. And the majority of these people just do not watch what he uploads. And that's really bad for YouTube. Like YouTube looks at that and goes, your channel must be bad because your subscribers aren't watching. Or a lot of them have changed jobs. They've retired. They've graduated into different jobs or whatever. But having 318,000 subscribers and only getting like 200, 100 views is, um, is is pretty bad. But anyway, yeah, that's that's the the, the curse of tutorial channels. They just uh, they just don't work on YouTube as much as the help people. And a lot of those people don't appreciate the help. They don't want to hear from you. They don't want to know who you are. They just want to click on the video that they feel they're entitled to have uh, that you've made out. You know, using your own time. Just shut up. Stop it. Just get to the bit that I need, skip, 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 and then I'm off, right? And that's uh, that's why my content changed over the years, but uh, I'm happy to do it again as I'm as I'm doing, but I, I have to uh, I have to mix it in with different, you know, just different styles of content, like, you know, the, the, the software comparisons and a bit of hardware stuff here and there. I can't just do tutorials. I, I just, I'm too, I've got too much resentment towards the typical, you know, faceless tutorial viewer who doesn't subscribe, who I've never met, who comes along and just takes and then vanishes. I've got a lot of resentment towards towards that kind of person. Um, I don't want to do something for, if I'm not, if I'm not going to enjoy it or I don't feel I'm getting value from it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's why things changed over the years. But um, I think I've got a good balance now, a good, you know, diverse style of, of material coming out. And um, it's good to still do the tutorial so I can, to just remind myself and other people why I am where I am, what I'm doing, what I'm doing, and why they should or could take my opinions and experience seriously. But um, there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna have anything coming out before the end of the year. I probably will. I probably will. I've got an MSI uh, workstation laptop video that I need. I really need to do, and I really want to do it as well because it's it's, a, it's an amazing bit of a bit of gear. So I want to get that done at some point. But uh, if I don't see you before uh, the new year, have a good one. Uh, I'm not American, so I'm not going to say have great holidays. We don't say that here. We say just have a good Christmas, mate. And um, yeah, look after yourself. Uh, give your mother a hug. And I'll see you in the next one. Doodles.